ideal that he or she can do anything desirable because the next life can make up for it. Yes, there will be karma to pay, but so what? There is a perspective that greatly varies from Christianity. That is a danger because the Bible claims we have one chance, one chance to meet the Savior and to become saved. If we miss that opportunity, if we reject the Son of God, according to Scripture, there is not another chance in the afterlife. There is either heaven or there is hell. What exactly is witchcraft? I define witchcraft according to what I believe is the fundamental definition of witchcraft in Scripture. That is, an individual who voluntarily consorts with a demon or one who possesses a familiar spirit, such as the medium at Endor we read about in the book of First Samuel in the Old Testament. The King James Version of the Bible identified her as a witch. We can see very clearly that she consorted with a familiar spirit. When I first met my teacher, she presented herself to me as a beautiful, naked woman. And she was exquisite in every detail, the essence of femininity. She matched my ideals of perfect womanhood at that time. She had a very soft voice. But when she grew angry with me, it could become quite abrasive. She seemed to possess an unearthly wisdom and knowledge. In short, she was everything I wanted to be. The teacher was not a flesh and blood woman. The teacher was a familiar spirit. I worshipped her, or I should say it. Idolized it followed after it as my role model. My relationship with the teacher was very important to me. I needed her favor. I needed her assistance. Without her help, I fell flat on my face. I could not even think without her. She took control of my mind and my will, and I allowed that so that I could get what I wanted. Is there a difference between white witches and black witches? There is no difference from the scriptural context. All witchcraft is in Satan's territory. It makes no difference whatsoever whether the witch claims to worship a benevolent god or and goddess, whether the witch claims to practice benevolent deeds for the good of society, whether the witch claims to be a good person doing good things justified by his or her own works. That makes no difference. According to scripture, the evidence of witchcraft, the identification of witchcraft, falls under the works of darkness, the kingdom of Satan. There is no distinction between good witchcraft and evil witchcraft in scripture. The witches get very upset when we Christians call them Satan worshippers. And I'm not calling witches Satan worshippers. Not all witches do worship Satan. However, the Bible is clear. The Bible says those things which the Gentiles sacrifice are sacrificed unto demons, indicating that the gods and the goddesses in occultism and witchcraft are demons. Therefore, the witches whether they want to realize it or not, according to the technology of Scripture, are worshiping the demons that Scripture calls the false gods. What's the difference between witchcraft and Satanism? Satanism can be the active worship of Satan. Witchcraft can be distinguished in its various traditions by what god or what goddess is being worshipped. Witchcraft has three basic tenets, reincarnation, cause-effect, and retribution. There are many differences between witchcraft and Satanism. There are differences in objectives, there are differences in codes of conduct, in standards, and there is also difference in procedure. That was Mary Harold, an ex-witch, talking about her involvement in the occult. 
As Mary indicated, there are certainly differences in the various codes of conduct of witches and Satan worshippers, but both groups are responsible to Satan whether they are aware of it or not. Modern Wicca owes much to Gerald Gardner, who lived from 1884 until 1964. He combined the Chris or the magical knife of the Malaysian Freemasonry, a pagan goddess, some Western ritual magic, and a belief in reincarnation in his book Witchcraft Today, which was published in 1954. Much of what is considered to be modern witchcraft originated with people who read Gardner's book and requested initiation. As we said before, many people think all of this is a joke. As an illustration of this point, Salem has an official witch right now by the name of Laurie Cabot. While some people may think that Ms. Cabot and her friends are a joke, let me assure you that Ms. Cabot takes herself very seriously. When photographed by a National Geographic photographer, Laurie Cabot and the other witches in her coven produced a blue streak on the photograph that they attributed to their cosmic energy. The photographer said this blue streak was, quote, inexplicable static electricity, close quote. A blue streak of light is common in many cultic and occultic groups and is believed by many to appear when there is a large amount of demonic activity present. Take a close look at the picture and judge for yourselves. Some witches practice animal and or human sacrifice and are very similar in many ways to those who call themselves Satan worshipers or followers. We also had an opportunity to talk with Mike Warnicke, an ex-witch and Satan worshiper, who told us about his involvement in the occult. We caught up with Mike backstage in an auditorium in South Carolina where he was getting ready to go on stage. And I had a time in my life where I was going through a real identity crisis, you know, just a real bad problem with uh, knowing who I was or if there was any worth to me or anything like that. And uh, one of the things that I uh, reached out to was the occult because through being able to do things with the occult and everything like that, I, I seemed to uh, <clears throat> get something to build kind of an identity around. And I was very popular in high school because I was the one that knew how to do the tarot cards and I was the one that knew how to do the Ouija board and I was the one that knew how to do the, you know, the uh, seances and everything. So I was lots of fun at a slumber party. I scare everybody to death. So, you know, that, that's how I got involved. I always say that uh, there's only kind of two kinds of spiritual food you can eat. And, uh, of course, there's angel's food and there's devil's food. And if you're not eating angel's food, then you're eating devil's food. And, the, and Satan is smart enough that when he begins to feed you on a diet of devil's food, that he doesn't start out with a devil's food cake, simply because he knows that the majority of people would choke on something that big and that rich. So he starts out with just a little bit of something, just whatever it takes to get your attention. And then he drags you further and further into the whole thing. And with me, it was just a, a, a desire to have an identity, to be somebody, and to you know, have something that everybody liked about me. What is a coven? A coven is a group of people that gather together to worship. You could say a coven is like a, uh, a an occult congregation. So the difference between, well, nowadays it's not so much uh, practiced this way as it used to be, but it used to be that, uh, that the uh, traditional number for a coven was only 13 people, being that 13 was supposedly the unlucky number and all of that stuff. But uh, anyway, um, Nowadays, you know, they gather together in a lot larger groups. Uh, modern Satanists are a lot uh, less traditional, a lot less prone to follow the rules exactly. And in most cases, <clears throat> where people are practicing witchcraft in the occult, you'll find them uh, practicing an, an amalgamation of things. It's not just, they're not just disciples of, say, uh, Anton LaVey, or just disciples of Aleister Crowley, or, or uh, just disciples of Helen Blavatsky or just members of the Process Church or something like that, but they are actually, you know, they actually glean from a lot of different areas and kind of mix up their own stew, so to speak. So you, but a coven is basically um, a group of people that gather together to worship. What is a master counselor? Well, in our group, a master counselor would have been, uh, there are three master counselors in, in our area. And the master counselors, the three guys, one was in charge of finance, one was uh, in fi charge of organization, and one was in charge of ritual. And uh, in my case, I was in charge of, of ritual. And that was for the, the group that I belonged to. And, uh, you know, I, it, was, it was me that decided what color robes we wore, and it's me and what configuration we stood in. I was the one that studied all the old books and, you know, learned how to draw the pentagrams with the right Latin words around the outside circles and not 
making sure that all of the lines were closed so that the boogies that we called up didn't get us. And yeah.